Here's the tip of the week. You can call this whatever you want. When you have round cement pads and then you put a, a piece of pressure treated post on it or a piece of hemlock for a post, whatever you're using, if you look at the, if you cut off a piece of 6x6 pressure treated and then you look at the core of 6x6, the core of all that 6x6 has no pressure treated in it at all whatsoever. So what happens is the rain uh, hits the cement pad, runs underneath the post, and gets absorbed up into that post where there's no pressure treated. Same thing with hemlock. You can take uh, like the, the fancy the fancy post that they have on porches, the 4x4 pressure treated post and the fancy. I have replaced probably who knows how many over the years that were completely rotted out on the inside of the 4x4 pressure treated post for, for a, a, a decorative porch. And the reason for that is because none of the pressure treated is in the center. So when moisture gets in there, it rots it out. The same thing with decking. You know, uh, when you put down pressure treated decking, it's not a lifetime fix. It's only good for about 10 to 15 years unless you treat it with something. If you just put the pressure treated down and think that's it, you're you're real you're mistaken. And I can get roughs on hemlock to last 15 years. So what's the big deal? You know, it's, that's ridiculous. So here's the trick on these posts. I don't I, I'm tired, it's the end of the day, I don't want to lose track. But on these six by six pressure treated posts that you saw me put down on my pads about two videos back. What I'm going to do next, and I would have done it that day, but I didn't have any. Uh, kitchen sponges. You know what you wash dishes with? They're about three inches by four inches, something like that. You take that kitchen sponge and you put it in that oil and kerosene mixture and let it suck up as much as it wants. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to jack this cabin up an inch and I'm going to slip two of them sponges underneath my post side by side completely full of that oil and kerosene mixture and I'm going to do that on all four posts so what's going to happen is that pressure treated post on the bottom is going to suck up that used motor oil and that kerosene into the bottom of the post and that post will not rot out and if it does, it's going to be a lot longer than, than 10 years. I can tell you that. So that's just, it's, that's just one more, one granddaddy of all for tips, as far as I'm concerned, uh, is what you can do with that uh, used motor oil and kerosene. And there's nothing new about this tip. It's just, uh, we've gotten away from it. Uh, it's an old school tip from way back. There's nothing Nothing new about used motor oil and kerosene at all. So I'm not claiming to have invented it, but I still use it. And the same thing on my, my main sills that run the length of this cabin. Those are rough sawn hemlock. When beams rot out, they generally rot out from the outside in. That means on that very outside edge that's exposed, that will start to rot first. Uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 years from now, if it's allowed to get water. Now, during, and it does set down lower than the cabin, so it is exposed, but the same deal on the end of that beam. I'm gonna let it set for one year, because this is all green hemlock, and then next year, I will paint the ends of my sill with that kerosene and uh, used motor oil uh, as a preservative. And that will take care of the ends of my sills and keep them from rotting out. So that'll take care of the tips on this. Now I'm going to give you the cabin tour. We're actually doing this video from right inside the cabin, which is, which is pretty neat.
I could eat every day over the campfire, I would. All that meat's got on it. There's a little salt and pepper. Some cayenne pepper. And smoke. No barbecue sauce. No marinade, nothing. And it's so good. The new campfire is going to work out quite nicely. I'm going to end this video with a little fishing story that is uh, <laughs> funny to me to this day. This goes back uh, at least oh, at least 30 years ago, at least. I used to have a lap streak boat that came from the ocean. It leaked like a sieve. We would take it up to what was called, it's called uh, Moose Look Maguntic Lake. And you'd actually, we'd go, we'd fish for a week or sometimes longer, uh, whatever. Uh, you'd actually have to take the boat, put it in the landing the night before, pull the plug, sink it down to bottom, fill it full of water, and then let it set overnight so it would swell up. And then you'd go the next day and pump it out, bail it out, and then go fishing. But that's not the funny story. But it was part of that boat. Uh, it was my very first boat. We paid $125 for it, and it weighed a ton. It was what 14 feet long, but it would it was it was it was a heavy boat. <laughs> we didn't have a trailer. We had to stick it on the back of a pickup truck. And I'll tell you what, good thing I was young and dumb. But anyways, I was out there fishing with my uncle, and. Uh, it was just one of them one of them things. I was there fishing. He showed up to visit. And um, I said, hey, I've got an empty boat. You want to you wanna go fishing? So he said, I'll grab my rod. So he grabbed his rod. And we went out fishing for the day. And I don't know, it was a couple hours into the day, and he got a fish on. What's funny about this, you know, I knew when he, when he grabbed his, I mean, I was probably about... 20 years old at the time, you know, every, you know, we'd have to sell equipment just to get to the next, next season, you know, sell a gun, buy an outboard type deal back then, <laughs> just so you could, you could hunt and fish the next season that was coming, so when he got in the boat, he had a fish pole, and it, it didn't, it was one of them uh, bale reels, and you could see that it didn't have hardly any fishing line on it, <laughs> I mean, you might as well said he was fishing with an empty, an empty pole. Well, as luck would go, you probably know where this story's going. Uh, we get out there, we're fishing, and he hooks into 
a five pound brook trout, 24 inches long. And that brook trout, all he wants to do is go to bottom. <laughs> and, you know, usually you like to play a fish, you know, especially when they're big like that. Because, you know, you, you, you play him out until he's tired. But we would be, we would be, uh, he'd be reeling, and then the fish would make a, a dive for bottom. <laughs> Just brrr, you know, right down to bottom. And that, that reel, you could see the, you could almost see the bottom of the reel because there was no line. And we say, reel, 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 you got to get some line back, reel, reel, reel. <laughs> so, and that went on for, I bet that fish went to bottom ten times like that. Finally, we got him close enough to the boat where I could slip a big net under him, and he had his fish. But I'll tell you what, I, it was the most nerve-wracking fishing trip I ever had, because we saw the fish several times. We saw him several times because uh, getting him up to the boat, and as soon as he got to the boat, turn around and head right for bottom. So the moral of this story is, if you're going to go fishing, make sure you got fishing line on your fish pole. <laughs> we, still, uh, we still talk about that fish to this day. It was actually, he was one of them guys that hardly ever went fishing. You know, once in a while he'd go fishing. But maybe once or twice a summer at the most. And uh, he just was in the boat at the right day, at the right time. And he got himself a five-pound brook trout, 24 inches long. And that was, that was pretty, I got the pictures of it. We, we laid him across a tire, a uh, truck tire. And uh, boy, that was a nice fish. So subscribe to the channel. Throw me a bone. Hit the notification bell and I'll make sure to keep bringing you stuff about the cabin and everything that we do here at East Grand Woodsman at the Rustic Log Cabin in Northern Maine. And I will see you next week.